So this week we are going to create a breakout style game. And uh, if you're not familiar with breakout, just uh, do a quick web search uh, on breakout. This is how you spell it, breakout. And uh, you can find some information about how that game looks like, what, what that game looks like. Uh, but we're going to create a simplified version of that. And I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time, just to see how it goes. And uh, we'll, I'll start the project from scratch and see, and basically walk through the entire process. Now, this will be, I'll probably run into problems and issues, but I think it'll be, it'll be good to, um, for you to see how we can solve certain problems when we start to see them. The first thing, of course, we want to do is we want to go to the asset store, or um, I guess for you, you would be using um, the the custom. Actually, let's let's do that instead. Go to asset import package. And we're going to import this package. Port. Okay, now we have that imported. Playmakers here, a few other things. Okay, I'm going to go to my Skillshare Playmaker layout. Okay, great. Okay, the first thing we want to do is uh, let's create a a handle for for the little bar down at the bottom and the, the one that you control when you when you play breakout right so uh, let me just change the color of the background so my main camera that's the only thing in the scene right now just go and change that a bit there's no real reason to to do this I just wanted to make it a little bit more appealing right okay now where do we start let's start with just creating a cube right and let's just reset this cube to its to the origin zero 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 position and let's scale it on the x-axis so it um, it looks more like a bar, All right? Okay, I'm gonna position it down a little bit. I will, we're gonna tweak this later, but just for now, we're gonna do that. And uh, of course, we need our lighting, so go to create directional light. Um, I think that's fine. I, I, I always like to re reset position and so that we can, um, can change that bit more systematically. I'm going to put this in the back so that it doesn't come into um, the scene when we want to manipulate other projects. Okay, other objects, sorry. Okay, so we have that. And I'm just going to create a material for now. So create a material here. Why do I want to do that? Uh, I just wanted to give this box, uh, this cube, a material so I can change the color. So I'm going to say this is the material for handle. Okay. And also I'm going to change the name to handle. I'm going to drag this material onto the handle object. You can either do that or do that. You can drag it on top of the object in a scene as well, but I'm going to do that here. Okay. Now this handle object, this cube, has the handle material. I'll, ch I'll change the name to handle material, just so that it's a little bit less confusing. And I'm going to simply change the color on the material. Now you can do that with any material you want. It's, it's kind of a quick way to, uh, to, to have color 
for, for things. I'm gonna, uh, I think that, that looks good. I'm gonna use that color. And as you can see, because of the lighting, you have this nice effect, sort of, you know, different uh, color on the different sides of the cube. It's nice. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Um, and uh, I'm gonna create a folder as well for uh, materials, just to keep things a bit tidier. Move that material in there, okay. And finally, I want to create I want to save the scene. Um, I'm just going to call it. Okay. And uh, I don't think we'll be creating more than one scene, so I don't need a scenes folder. So that's fine. Okay. So, so now we have a visual representation of the handle bar, the the handle. Next thing we want to do is uh, go in, into Playmaker and start creating a control, right? So I want to create a control where by pressing the left and right arrow keys, I want to move this handle. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's add a state machine to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to move this down here. See if, uh, see if that gives us a bit more space. Okay, so I'll call this idle. Okay, so let's see what we have. We need to be able to get the left and right key. Right, so a quick way to do this is by using Unity's input system. So we're going to be using the uh, Unity Input Manager for this. And uh, let me just quickly explain what that does. And uh, we're not going to go into all the customization and changing all the keys inside the input system. Um, but we're just going to make use of it. So let's go to this Get Access action. And what does this do? This gets the value of this specified input access and stores it in the float variable C Unity input manager docs. Right, so let's click on this question mark, this little button here, online help, and we'll go to the, the instruction page and basically in this action you'll see that there's the access name, multiplier, which uh, I'll explain in a minute, and then you store it somewhere. And um, Unity has these default access that you can use to to um, to accept user input. Now you, you can go into even more detail by clicking on this link here, Unity Input Manager, and uh, this is where you can define how the access, uh, axes are um, accessed, uh, are defined, and the Input Manager is, I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings, Input. You have the input manager here, and then you can define these axes. And what we are most interested in is the horizontal axis. And uh, you can see that two buttons defined left and right button. Alternatively, you can use A and D, and uh, there are a whole bunch of settings here. But the, the important thing here is knowing this term horizontal, because that's the one we're using. Um, you don't have to worry too much about these for now um, because these are all set up for you to use all right so let's go back here and just drag get access so okay so let me explain that once once again get access allows us to use these axes one of these axes from the unity input system again that's added Project settings input. We can use that action to access these input axes. And for now, we're most interested in horizontal. All right, so I'm going to copy that name just because I'm uh, going to be using it here. Access name. So, so this has to match which control axis 
axis we want to use horizontal. Multiplier is basically um, when you use the axis, Unity will give you a number based on the key that's being pressed, and you can multiply it to a bigger number if you to basically you can use this to change the speed and movement um, of this handlebar. I'll, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But another thing I want to talk about now is you can see that there's this store option, and this it says none here. And uh, let me get rid of that for now. That's something I had created earlier. So basically, this area is where we can store the input into a float variable. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of a variable, let me quickly go over that. <clears throat> so there you can see that on Playmaker, there is a variables tab. Click on that, and there's nothing here. So what is a variable? A variable is something that varies, right? Something that can be changed, something that's changeable. So think of it as um, a container, a box that, that's empty and you can put different things in, inside, uh, into the box, into the container. So um, for example, if I want to say, okay, I want this box to hold a number for me and this number is going to represent the position of um, oh actually let's, let's do a simple one let's say if I want a box that contains a word and then I can change the word to different nouns right so I can say okay I want the, the box the variable to be called word now basically I have this imaginary empty container and then the label on the container says word and the type of the container will have to be a string a string is a variable type that handles text right handles any sort of textual input so I can say the word in this box is red or actually let's do apple right so now you have this imaginary container and the name of the container, the label on the container is word and inside this container we have this string of text and that's, that text is apple and you can change this to something else, you can say well I want to, I want this word container to have a string um, instead of apple, apple we're gonna do um, orange. <clears throat> now all of a sudden this container with the label word on, on top has the string orange in it. This is a little bit abstract but uh, you'll see how to use it once we start using it. So let's create, uh, oh, before we go, go on, let me just talk about some of the different variable types that we can use. So when you, when you, before you create a new variable when you're creating a new variable, let's, let's call, uh, let's say we're, we're creating an empty container with a label R, R actually let's do, uh, let's do move for now, I might change that, but let's, let's say okay I'm putting a label on this container and then the label is movement, now I need to define what types of objects and what types of what kind of things I can put inside the container and that's defined in the variable type so uh, I think the most important ones for us now um, is float so float just means a number with decimal points now it means more than that but for our, our purpose let's just remember float is any number that's not an integer right so a number with decimal points int is integer which is an integer mathematically speaking bool type is imagine if you're trying to answer a yes and no question right so a, bool, a boolean variable can only hold either a yes or a no inside the container so this is useful when you want to say well is this door open yes or no then that's the you, you'll be using a boolean variable for that 
You can also have the container contain a game object. Now, a game object is any object up here that we create, that we include in the scene. So you can have the container hold that game object. The string is, as we just talked about, string a string variable holds text, a string of text. It could be one word, it could be a sentence, it could be a lot of different sentences altogether. So basically, just remember string variables are for text. Vector 2, we're not going to be using that. Um, and vector 3 is important. So, so basically, vector 2 and vector 3 are used to hold multiple values, right? So a vector 3 holds an x, a y, and a, a z value, right? So three different float values. So think of it as a huge container that's divided into two parts or three parts, right? If it's a vector 2, then you have this container that's divided into two parts, and each part can hold one float variable. A vector 3 is a big container that has three compartments inside, and you can put three different floats. You can put three different numbers into this one container, this one vector 3 container. Color variables are uh, fairly straightforward. It's, it's a container that holds a value for the color. So the color could be, you know, it could be white, red, um, you know, any kind of color that you can define. Now there are very di various different ways you can define a color, uh, but a, a color variable will hold the color. Uh, we're not going to be using most of the other ones, um, but we'll, we'll get to them when we when we need them. Um, but for now, you can just remember that a variable is a container that holds different types of objects or different types of things. Now, here for our purpose, we want to move this bar, this handle, and what we need to do here is we're getting the horizontal axis and we're storing that number in a variable and then let's just create this movement variable now it's a float variable because I want it to be a number with the decimal points and I'm going to store here movement right so you, you can make sure that you have this debug checked so we can see that the value of that variable and uh, in this variables tab you can define the value right here if I change that to 5, see that now it's 5. But I'm going to keep that at 0 for now. OK. Uh, now, if I run this game, you'll see, I think it's a little bit easier to explain what we're doing here. So another thing is we're, we're running this at every frame because we want to get the user input continuously. All right, so let's run the game. OK. So without touching the keyboard you can see that there's no change in the movement but as soon as i start pressing the right button you see that the movement has gone to one from zero it goes from zero as soon as i start pressing down this right button key it goes from zero to one and then if i press down the left key it goes from zero to negative one Zero to negative one. So you, you want to be looking at this. So this is how you can use the Unity Input Manager to get to convert an input into something you can use in the game. Right. So hopefully I've um, demonstrated how you can use that. Now this is where it gets interesting. Now if I, if I change the multipliers to ten. So the game is playing, so this is not going to be saved, which is fine, uh, just for the demonstration purpose. When I show me the game tab, when I go, when I press the right uh, right key, it goes from zero to ten instead of is zero to one. So essentially, the multiplier multiplies ten to whatever number the axis input is giving you. And how is that useful? Well, it's useful. The next step 
where we start defining the movement. Right. Okay, let's uh, stop this. Okay, the next step we want to do is, let me just get rid of this uh, state for now, I don't know why I created it. Just uh, an old habit. Um, so the next thing we want to do is trans using this variable that we have to move the handle. Right, so let's go to the action browser again. And we want, um, oh yeah, we want transform. Right. Remember, transform is the component that manages the position and the scaling and the rotation of the object. And now what we want to do is we want we want this handle to move on the x axis like that. Right. Again, the red handle here, the red uh, axis here is x. So I'm gonna before I do that, I'm gonna reset this to zero. So it's in the center. Okay. Again, action browser transform translate drag translate down here and it's very simple right so we are we, we've established that we want to move along the the x axis so let's just say okay take the movement variable and then apply it to the x axis so move along the x axis and we wanted to do it Every per second, every frame, I think that's all, that's all fine. Uh, space itself is fine. So, okay, let's see what that looks like. Press play. Okay, now when I click on, when I press the right button, you can see that now we're moving. We are moving left and right. So that's fairly simple, isn't it? Right, so so again, let me explain. When you press down the button, we're getting the horizontal data, horizontal input data from the system. And we put that data into the movement variable. And then down here, we're moving the object in the x axis with that data. Right, with that number. Okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, this is moving a little bit too slow for me. So I want to make it move a little bit faster. And as we can see previously, if I change the multiplier to 10, I will change the um, I'll change the way this variable is going to present. Right, so basically, I'm, I'm multiplying everything by 10, which will translate to, well, which will be that in the translate action, we'll be moving faster as well. So, so let's just see how that's, that's working for us. Right, okay. Multiplier is now 10, and pay attention to this variable here. Now we're going from 0 to 10 or 0 to negative 10, instead of 0 to 1, 0 to negative 1. And you can see that this is moving a lot faster and if we scroll down to look at the translate action, you see that it's translating with a bigger number as well. Right, so that's where we can adjust the speed of the handle boy. Now what I want to do is let's stop this. Make sure you stop the game when you want to make any real changes. I want to make sure that we can adjust this speed variable. Let's, let's make this into a speed variable so we can adjust it um, can adjust it without coming into the state machine. So let's go to variables so speed and it's going to be a float because it is going to be a number with decimal points. Let's go back to state and click on this button here. This will allow you to switch from manual input to using variables. Right. So we've got the speed variable here. Let's use that. And let's go back to variables. Right. Now the speed value is zero, and that's not good. So we let's put one here. That's that was the default one. Actually let's move from yeah let's, okay let's do one. 
and uh, you can see that multiplier is back at 1 and if we hit play this is going to give us the same speed as we originally had now I can change this to again 10 and you go back to the state see that that's changed press play and we're going at much faster speed so that's really cool but what I really want to do is I want the ability to change the speed without going into this scene right so what I want to do here is I want I want it to show up in the inspector and it's very easy to do that you just click on speed and check inspector right? and all of a sudden you can see that now it's showing up here so you can change the number here and it will directly change the value here now this is handy because let's see let's say if I'm looking at the project view or I'm looking at the camera and now I want to change something on the handle I can click on handle and I can just change the speed here right and also you can give it a tool tip so I can say speed of the handle now when you hover over this option then it's going to tell you um, it's going to show you a tool tip. So this is really handy when you have when you start to have a lot of variables that you, you, you in, in the inspector you want to quickly understand remember you want to quickly remember what the variable does okay so let me just demonstrate that once again really quickly hit play All right we have the speed at 10 uh, again you can drag right next to the text field you can you can sort of change the value there I'm going to do 5 now it's moving at a slower speed change that to 0.5 right, 0 0.5 now it's moving at a really slow speed 1 so another thing that's great about having a speed variable is that you can have things in the game that changes this variable so you can dynamically change the speed of this handle through other events through other triggers other objects that could potentially impact your gameplay so good now we have um well, we have our handle control created and, and this is actually not an idle state anymore so we'll, we'll, we'll change this to move moving movement just for now. Okay, save. Let's go to the next video.